Right, so now I've connected up the uh, motor and the VFD to the Chinese mini lathe. And I've now correctly set the um, configuration of the um, terminals inside to Delta. I had it wrongly set in star, which is um, the connections all across um, these three here. Um, when I took the um, nuts off and took the actual uh, connectors off, or the links off, I found one underneath um, so that I was able to actually set it up in the three positions like this for Delta. If you do buy a um, motor and it um, is set in star and you want to change it over to Delta and you take those links off and you find that you've only got two, um, you all, all you have to do is actually just make another link up, um, copy one of the others, um, you only have to do it roughly and connect the extra one up. So Delta is the correct um, configuration for this motor, this dual voltage motor and this um, VFD setup. Also in my um, last video I had an on off switch between my power socket and the input of the VFD. Um, there was no real need for that and I had it wrongly set up so that the earth was switched which is um, something that should never be done and thankfully um, people pointed this out very quickly to me in the comments again and I have taken that um, switch out altogether now so that the um, cable and earth is uh, completely continuous um, from the power socket to the VFD. So at the moment I'm using the actual control panel on the VFD to operate the um, mini lathe um, but I have ordered some um, switches uh, for a start stop and emergency stop um, which I'm going to connect up to the actual uh, block inside so that I can actually um, operate the um, switches on the lathe and I hope to mount those um, switches in this now empty um, control box. And I think I'll have forward and reverse on this panel as well. I've ordered some Eaton push buttons. They're nice size buttons and will look nice on this panel. And all these are very easy to actually wire into the um, VFD in the top panel here. And the instructions seem to be very clear on how to do that. I've left my um, tachometer that I already had connected um, to the mini lathe. Um, this is an independent um, tachometer, it's not connected to the VFD at all. It's run off of um, one of these um, power sockets here, you can get them from Banggood. And then the pickup point is um, at the back of the lathe and the magnet is on the uh, back end of the spindle. And I've shown how to um, connect that up and get that in the right position on my Google Plus page. And um, I think I'll actually leave that one on the lathe and not bother um, connecting one directly to the VFD. So um, my drive pulley is about six and a half inch in diameter. And the one on the motor is about three and a half inch diameter and I find this is the ideal setup um, for this VFD both for torque and speed. And this setup here produces some um, excellent torque. I'm able to use large um, diameter drills straight into steel without a pilot drill with very little slowing of the spindle. And that's um, just something I'd like to say. Um, many people buy VFDs and then um, condemn them saying they don't produce enough torque for the motor. Often the case is that they've got the wrong size pulleys. You won't be able to use uh, the wrong size pulleys and then expect the VFD to produce um, the torque that you need. So what I did was experiment with various different size pulleys until I got the optimum torque um, available. And I haven't had to alter the uh, VFD from its default settings at all. So that's one thing to remember if you're going to buy a VFD and a three phase motor and do a setup like this. Um, don't expect the actual VFD to produce uh, torque that you need. 
if you have incorrect sized or diameter pulleys. And the great thing about this setup is that you can actually experiment with all different size pulleys um, with this mandrel in the back of the lathe. And if you use these um, link belts, um, you can make them longer or shorter um, for whatever pulley sizes you're using. I haven't put a uh, belt tensioner on there. I've just um, bolted the motor directly to the um, bench at the back of the lathe there. And I find that um, I can take the um, belt off like that and put it on and it's the correct tension. And I um, obviously got it to the correct size by um, just taking out the links or adding them. And I um, bought this wonderful digital tachometer from Banggood. It's an AR925 and it actually um, runs or uh, collects the data by actual contact. So you have various different rubber um, ends to go in the um, end here. So I can actually stick it in the um, end of the spindle on the motor and actually get a, get a reading from the motor to see what RPM that is. And then I can actually change that end there, pull the rubber out and put um, like a cup one on like that. And then I can actually use it on the um, back of the spindle um, to get the actual RPM and see that it's the same as my tachometer on the machine. So it's um, very quick to use and you have a maximum and minimum setting. There was no um, instructions in English, it was all in Chinese, um, but it's very simple to operate. And um, it turns itself off um, after a short period of time to save the battery. There's no off switch. Um, press on or null to clear. And like I say, you can actually um, set a maximum or get a maximum speed and hold that and then get a minimum speed and hold that and have that in the memory. It also does um, meters a minute and feet a minute and RPM. And I think it's actually the best um, RPM or digital tachometer you can actually get for the price. And it runs off of um, three um, AA or treble A batteries. And when you're doing setups like this, it's much quicker to use this type uh, rather than the um, infrared type where you have to stick a bit of um, luminous tape on the diameter of the pulley or whatever. You can quickly go from spindle to motor to see exactly uh, what speeds those are doing. So now I come to the test. I have a um, piece of steel here in the chuck uh, which is uh, being cut off of one of those weightlifting bars. I'm not exactly sure um, what type of steel, whether it's hardened steel or just mild steel, but it's quite hard and it'll give a good indication of what the mini lathe can do now. I have a drill which is um, 41 64th, which is 640 thou in diameter. And earlier I centre drilled it and um, just tested this out on the end here, um, just to see how it was going to go. So remember the drill is drilling straight into the steel and there's no pilot hole. And it's about 430 RPM.
Now I find that absolutely excellent. I've never been able to drill with a large diameter drill on the Chinese mini lathe directly into steel without a pilot hole um, with the original motor and electronics without it seriously slowing the spindle or actually stopping it. So on the VFD in the stop position this button here um, becomes a jog button for the spindle so you can jog it forward or press reverse and you can see there that I've got different settings on that like I showed in the last video and this is how it looks on the lathe when I'm pressing that button So at the moment my jog forward speed is about 199 and the reverse is three hundred and sixty three RPM. So if I want to further reduce the RPMs of those um, jog speed forward and reverse, I first look in the instructions on the parameter specifications and P86 is the jog forward frequency and P87 is jog reverse. Um, they were both set in 20 as default when I first got the VFD and I have slowed the um, forward one um, a bit already and the VFD is all very easy to program and now I'll just show you an example again I showed this in the um, last video but I'll show you the effect it has on the um, spindle speeds or whatever so I'm going to change those um, jog forward and jog uh, reverse frequencies on P86 and P87 so I go into the programming mode and then the P stands for the parameters and I've got to go up to 86 I can do that by holding this button in here and it will advance um, quickly or you can do it um, singularly and I found uh, you can actually um, press this one here um, to go up to the next um, digit so I can go straight up to 80 Six, and then press the function uh, data button to get uh, the data for that parameter and I've got that one set in 10 at the moment so I'm going to reduce that to 5 and see what that um, does and press function data to enter that that ends the um, setting of that parameter and it goes on to the next one which is 87 so that's the reverse um, jog frequency and you can go through all the program like this in sequence and set all the um, parameters so press function data on that one again that's set at 20 which is the default code or the default, default um, setting so I'm going to take that down to 5 as well and to enter that and that one's um, ended and then come out the um, parameter or programming mode by pressing program again and that's all set again so now this uh, button here 
becomes the jog button again so if I press that one it's in forward rotation there you can see by the LED on there so press the jog button and it's now five and reverse and that one's now five and seeing how that plays out on the lathe um, spindle jog RPM forward is 95 And reverse is 95 RPM. And it's totally amazing all the different um, parameter settings you have on the VFD. And I actually find it um, fascinating um, all the different things that you can actually do with a motor. So I have the same type of hard steel um, in the lathe jaws again and I'm going to do some facing off and turning and see how that performs. facing off a rough sawn end So I was taking a 40 thou cut there on this hard steel before the um, insert failed. I need to change that one now. Um, that's one of the reasons I don't take um, very deep cuts like this on the mini lathe with steel. 
um, because I haven't got a coolant system set up. So I've just changed the um, insert around. And you can see by the um, swarf there, it was coming off blue, um, showing that it was way too hot uh, for the insert um, in this type of turning. Too deep a cut without coolant. Um, but it just gives you an example of how the machine is running with a new three-phase motor. So I'm really pleased with the performance of this dual voltage three phase one horsepower motor and the excellent VFD um, that powers it. And it's transformed my Chinese mini lathe into a lathe that's got really good performance now and is really reliable. Plus I have loads of different options of experimenting with different pulleys and different settings on the VFD. So if you want all these benefits and you want to upgrade, I actually recommend this um, VFD. Um, they're not all that dear to buy. And like I said, they're very easy to set up and um, use. Plus with the new motor, they're much more reliable than the actual electronics and the original motor that came with the Chinese mini lathe. And you'll save yourself a lot of money, even in the short run, from having to buy replacement electronic parts.